James Kennedy Ministries presents Truths That Transform. God tells us to worship Him alone, and the Constitution gives us the freedom to do that. But in some places, our government is now denying your freedom to do what God commands. How? Find out on today's Truths That Transform. This is Truths That Transform. Welcome to the first 2018 episode of Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. To begin the new year, we'd like to hear from you about the issues you believe are most important this year. Please contact us today to get your spiritual state of the nation survey by calling toll-free 877 962 7677. Though many try to obscure this fact, America was settled and founded by those with a strong reliance on the law of God. Yet today, some are working overtime to silence biblical truth and to marginalize Christians. Later on this program, we will look at the first commandment, which tells us to worship the triune God and Him alone. And we'll see how the forces of secularism are trying to make that illegal and often succeeding despite our own First Amendment. And we'll update you on the case of one courageous Christian woman who could lose everything because of her stance for truth. We begin by looking at the current landscape of religious liberty, or the lack thereof, we might say, with Jeremy Dice an attorney with the First Liberty Institute, which defends religious freedom in court. I recently had a chance to talk with Jeremy in Washington, D.C. Give me your take on freedom of conscience. My conscience is not free. My religious free exercise, my speech, a free press, freedom of assembly, even the right to petition the government, I'm not really free in any of those things if my conscience is bound. And yet the culture seems to be trying to deal with these issues on that very point by labeling historic Christian teaching hate speech, uh, by attacking these issues at the fundamental conscience level. Well, what the founders, I think, recognized immediately is that if a people are going to be free, their conscience must be free as well. Uh, they need to be free to be able to, to, be, to, to have this higher duty that they have to their God that is higher even than their duty to government. And that's why throughout our entire history, we have had a, a practice of accommodating the religious beliefs of Americans. Their rights are, and they're, they're, they're frankly their duty to have to, to be in right standing before the divine. That's an important task that, that all Americans ought to value in, in our country for long uh, years has, has done so. Uh, but whether that is in uh, you know, students that, that, are, that are told they can't read their Bible at school, or, or if it's in employees that are, are told that they can't reference their faith or in a private conversation at work, uh, these are ways that, uh, that, that the First Amendment rights have been, uh, have been bound and that they've not been free to be able to exercise their conscience. Think of Coach Kennedy, uh, the, the high school football coach out in Bremerton, Washington. He's a great example of that. Here's a man who is conscience bound to thank God for, for his, uh, his opportunity to coach the game of football, to pray for his players. And his conscience required him to go to the 50-yard line after the football game, take a knee in silent prayer for 15 or maybe 30 seconds, uh, and move on with his day. But that was a bridge too far for the high school out there. Uh, because the students could see him, because the, the, the fans in, in the stands could, could see him, apparently, they had to fire him and not renew his contract uh, so that that would not be a problem anymore. Mm-hmm. Since Coach Kennedy can't take a knee in silent prayer for 15 or 30 seconds, well, now what about the Jewish coach on the sidelines? Can he wear his yarmulke? Because that's a visible display of religion. Can he wear his yarmulke on the sidelines? Mm-hmm. Well, under the Ninth Circuit's current ruling, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about the Catholic coach who has a quarterback go down in the middle of the game with an injury, and he goes out to midfield while the medics are working on him and crosses himself in silent prayer? Is that coach now fired? Well, according to the Ninth Circuit, probably. And it can get more absurd. What about a teacher saying, God bless you, to a student who just sneezed? 
I mean, this is the, these are the ridiculous ramifications that occur when the government acts to bind the conscience of its Americans. And I know the setting is different, but the, the contrast is still dramatic, isn't it? The coach can't kneel at the 50-yard line, but NFL players can, pampered, overpaid uh, NFL players can uh, take a knee during the national anthem, and it's all this big controversy about their freedom to express itself. Now, I know one of them's in the context of a government entity, and the other one's not. But at the very least, at the very least, if the players are going to have the right to kneel on, at the, at, on the sidelines during the Star Spangled Banner, and I've got my own opinions about that, like everybody does. But if NFL players are going to be permitted to kneel on the sidelines and protest, then Coach Kennedy ought to be afforded the right to take a knee in silent prayer for 15 or 30 seconds. That seems not only just fair, it just seems like the basic principle of freedom in this country. We've just seen an amazing uh, proliferation of cases of the nature of freedom of conscience, from photographers who have decided that they can't offer their services for a gay wedding because of religious conviction, to florists, same thing. Uh, there's a case before the U.S. Supreme Court involving a cake maker, an artistic cake maker. I've seen some of his cakes. They're really amazing. Uh, and would, he serves a broad clientele, including many uh, gay and lesbian people. He's happy to do that. But when he was asked to make a cake for a gay wedding, a same-sex wedding, he said, that would violate my, my, my belief in uh, biblical teaching. And so I'm sorry, I can't do that. I'll help you find someone else who will make a cake for you. And so he has been hauled before courts and lost at every level, trial level, every appeals level, now before the U.S. Supreme Court. Tell us why this case is important. Well, I, I think it's so important because in this country, we want a very diverse marketplace. We want one that is, is tolerant of many views. We want the ability to be able to disagree with one another and to disagree even, even loudly if we have to, but to have the freedom to be able to dis disagree because that contributes to the diversity of our culture more broadly. What, what we don't want is a government that says, you will believe like this, but not like that. That creates a very flat, very bland, monolithic kind of a world where the government is insisting upon a, a, a sanitized public square uh, that, that nobody wants to live in that type of an environment. Instead, we need to have the diverse voices of men like Jack Phillips and, and people like our clients, Aaron and Melissa Klein, uh, and, and others who are, are willing to say, hey, this is my point of view. Uh, maybe you could give me a chance to listen to it all. Uh, it, that's just a, the basic principle of, of, our, of our country's commitment to diversity, uh, where we would tolerate one another's indivi uh, individual beliefs and respect them for, for having them as we both try to work out what it is that we believe and, and how we believe it. That's the core principle of, of our country. That's freedom, where we allow people to disagree with one another and not haul them into jail or, or threaten them with fines and, and penalties for having a difference of opinion and belief. As Jeremy Dyes mentioned, people like Aaron and Melissa Klein and Jack Phillips, whose case will be decided by the Supreme Court this year, are finding themselves in legal jeopardy because of their Christian beliefs. This is what happens in a nation that has abandoned the law of God. G.K. Chesterton once remarked that when we reject the Ten Commandments, we end up getting ruled by the Ten Thousand Commandments. We cannot pass enough man-made laws to make up for the deficit in God's law. And we face grave consequences when we ignore that law. As Dr. D. James Kennedy explains in this portion of his message, The Moral Law of God. The scorching desert, the dim presence, the impenetrable cloud, the smoke as of a furnace, the leaping flames, the trembling mountain, the voice of the living God, as it were, the roar of thunder, all conspired to melt the hearts of the people of Israel and to cause them to draw back and to prostrate themselves upon the ground and cry out, Speak thou unto us, Moses, and we will hear. But let not God speak to us any more, lest we die. For God himself had descended from heaven and sat upon the mountain as some gigantic granite throne and had dispensed unto his creation the laws of this world. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, 
out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And the people melted in terror and in fear. And that singular day was the day that God gave the operating instructions for his creation. And how foolish have men been who have refused to read or to heed the instruction book that comes with every human being, the law of our God. Not this time did God speak through prophets, but with his own voice he spake those words, and then with his own finger engraved them on tables of stone. And one thing that I would have you to remember about the law of God, you cannot break it. You can only break yourself upon it. God is not an elected king, and should all of humanity conspire together, they could not diminish his power or his will by one iota. Tragically, however, down through the centuries of history, individuals and nations have hurled themselves against God's law only to break themselves into pieces and the fragments have filled our cemeteries, our asylums, our prisons, and our skid rows. You cannot break the law of God. You can only break yourself upon it. Listen, America, wake up and repent, lest that stone grind thee into dust. Thou shalt and thou shalt not is the voice of the Almighty. But we live today in what the New Testament says will occur in the last days. It will be, they say, an age of anomia, lawlessness, and there has never been such an age of lawlessness as that in which we live today. Men have ignored the laws of God. They have jettisoned his commandments, and they have plunged themselves in their folly deeper into the mire of debauchery and wickedness and perversion of every sort. And indeed, it is a lawless age in which we live. Reminiscent of what Jesus said would come when the citizens would hate him when he had gone off to a far country and they would cry out, we will not have this man to reign over us. And that is the great question before the nations of the world in this hour. Will men and nations submit to having Jesus Christ, the divine creator of the world, to reign over them, or will they not? What is the purpose of the Bible? What is the great end that it seeks? What is it trying to accomplish? Why did Jesus Christ come and die? Well, you say it was that men might be saved and might have eternal life. Yes, that is true, but it is only partially true. Let me let you hear it in the words of that great Princeton theologian, A. A. Hodge. We have seen, he said, that the great end in which all the providential activities of God culminate in this world is the establishment of a universal kingdom of righteousness, which is to embrace all redeemed men and unfallen angels and to endure forever in absolute perfection and blessedness. This is God's purpose in this world. 
to establish a perfect kingdom which shall be perfected only when Christ returns, but a kingdom wherein men and women yield themselves in glad and willing submission to the scepter of their king. America's founders acknowledged our religious freedom while also reminding us that we reject God's rules for living at our own peril. As George Washington put it, religion and morality are indispensable supports for our political prosperity. But today, many government agencies and courts are punishing those who are conscience bound by the Bible. We have previously shared with you the case of a florist being prosecuted for refusing, because of her conscience, to celebrate same-sex marriage. Here's an update on that story. Well, Arlene's Flowers is a God-based business. Uh, we treat all our customers with love and respect. We get to take what God has created and make something beautiful and unique and to express the things that flowers say at all, as they say, and it does. And when I do weddings, it's even more, not only a challenge, but also an expression. It's not just flowers. It's an event between a man and a woman in Christ in the church. Those who believe that holy matrimony is God's first institution stand in an increasingly hostile culture. For Baronel Stutzman of Richland, Washington, the challenge to her faith came in 2013. I've worked here for 30 years. I've owned it for 19 years, and I bought it from my mom. We've had all types of employees, including gays and bisexuals. We have all types of customers. I've known Rob for over 10 years. He's been a customer of ours, and uh, it's just a joy to work with him. So when Rob came in and started talking about his marriage, I just put my hands on his and I said, Rob, I'm sorry I can't do your wedding because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. Rob said he understood. He talked about his mom walking him down the aisle. We talked about why he and Kurt decided to get married and, and how they were going to be married. And he asked me to recommend another florist and I recommended three for him that I knew would make his wedding beautiful because I knew he wanted something special. And we hugged each other and he left. Well, I didn't think anything was going to happen because I thought Rob and I were fine, but his partner put something on Facebook and it went viral from there. What happened in an interesting turn of events, uh, in a very unprecedented fashion, the Attorney General caught wind of what happened through social media. And it was the Attorney General who filed a lawsuit against Baronel first. That was a shock to us. And then just a little bit later, the ACLU uh, got a hold of Kurt and Rob, and they also sued us. So we actually have four lawsuits against us, two personal and two corporate. The Attorney General and the same-sex couple have accused Baronel of violating the Washington Law Against Discrimination and the Consumer Protection Act. I never turned down any event for Rob because he was gay. I turned it down because I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. It's a covenant between God and the church. She stands to lose everything she owns, her life savings, her home, um, everything, simply for referring a longtime friend uh, to a different florist. The Attorney General wrote us a letter saying that uh, if we paid a $2,000 fine and continued to do gay weddings, and uh, he would drop the lawsuit. Also. The ACLU is suing us for all their legal fees, so which could be over a million dollars. So when the Attorney General said that, then I wrote him a letter back. Your offer reveals that you don't really understand me or what this conflict is all about. It's about freedom, not money. I certainly don't relish the idea of losing my business, my home, and everything else your lawsuit threatens to take from me. My freedom to honor God and doing what I do best is more important. In February of 2015, uh, the lower court ruled against Baronel Setzman. And the judge basically told me that I can have my, my faith, but I can't practice it. So he basically told me I had to live my faith within the four walls of the church, uh, which isn't going to happen because Christ is my life. 
In February of 2017, the Washington State Supreme Court also concluded that the government can force her, and by extension, other Washingtonians, to create artistic expression and participate in events with which they deeply disagree. The U.S. Supreme Court has been petitioned to take up Baronel's case. Meanwhile, this past December, the High Court heard arguments for a similar case, the Masterpiece Cake Shop versus the Colorado Civil Rights Commission, with a ruling expected this summer. This isn't just about me. This is about everybody's freedom. When the government can come in and bully you and use you as an example and destroy you if you don't bow down to an agenda, then we don't live in a free America. When do you draw the line? Where do you stand? How important is freedom to you? The Constitution guarantees the free exercise of religion without government interference. That includes the freedom to worship and obey the God of the Bible, the only God of the universe, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, Baronel Stutzman and increasing numbers of Christians like her are being prosecuted simply for exercising their faith. So what can we do? Well, here's my very good friend, Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy with more. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you, Frank. The first thing you can do to take a stand for freedom is to contact us to take the Spiritual State of the Nation survey. D. James Kennedy Ministries is going to be extremely active in 2018, standing for truth and defending your freedom. But we need to hear from you about which issues are the most important to you. Contact us to get your survey as soon as possible. Fill it out and return it to us right away to make your voice heard on the most vital issues we face. To request your survey, simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll-free 877-962-7677 or go online to djkm.org. And when you do, please prayerfully consider making a generous donation to the ongoing work of this ministry. As our thanks for your donation, we'll send you the brand new book, Let Freedom Ring, featuring chapters from William J. Federer, Dr. Peter Lilback, Dr. Jerry Newcomb, former U.S. Representative John Hostetler, and my dad, Dr. D. James Kennedy, among others. Detailing America's founding principles and where we've gone wrong, this important book points the way forward to reclaiming our freedom. And if you're able to give a generous donation of $60 or more, we'll send you Let Freedom Ring plus the original U.S. Congressional Handbook. This one-of-a-kind guide, presented by the D. James Kennedy Center for Christian Statesmanship, includes crucial information on each member of Congress, contact information for their key staffers, and it equips you with everything you need to know to be responsible and active in the cause of biblical truth. Contact us right away to receive your spiritual state of the nation survey to let your voice be heard. And please consider including a generous donation so we can send you the new book, Let Freedom Ring, as our thanks. And for a generous donation of $60 or more, we'll send you the book, Let Freedom Ring, plus the original U.S. Congressional Handbook. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339. Or call toll-free 877-962-7677. Or go online to djkm.org. The late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia was known for his fiery dissents as the high court drifted further and further from its constitutional moorings. One of his final and most forceful dissents came in the case legalizing same-sex marriage in all 50 states. Justice Scalia saw that the federal judiciary was intent on implementing the social policies of the American left by inventing new rights not found in that constitution and overruling the ones that are there explicitly, leaving the principle of representative government behind. This is what Scalia wrote. 
Today's decree says that my ruler and the ruler of 320 million Americans coast to coast is a majority of the nine lawyers on the Supreme Court. This practice of constitutional revision by an unelected committee of nine, always accompanied by extravagant praise of liberty, robs the people of the most important liberty, the freedom to govern themselves. How true that is, while our Constitution specifically guarantees religious freedom, those rights are on a collision course with the unconstitutional agenda of the radical left. And in order to implement that agenda, liberal progressives are determined to silence and coerce Christians into compliance. And all of this flows directly from the efforts of leftists to throw constitutional government out the window. This term, in what is likely to become a landmark decision, the Supreme Court will be deciding the case of a Christian baker who declined to provide a cake celebrating a same-sex wedding for reasons of conscience. Will the court honor the specific constitutional provision that bars government interference in the free exercise of religion? Or will it continue down its path of scrapping every part of the Constitution that inhibits the radical liberal vision by instituting state-mandated acceptance of that which Christianity prohibits? Oral arguments in the case of Masterpiece Cake Shop versus Colorado Civil Rights Commission were held in December. A decision will likely be rendered by June. And dear friends, I tell you, this is a matter for concerted prayer to Almighty God. For in this decision, we may hear the answer to Abraham Lincoln's implied question posed at Gettysburg so many years ago. Will this nation under God have a new birth of freedom? Or will government of the people, by the people, and for the people perish from the earth. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. We wish you a happy and blessed new year. Thanks for joining us on Truths That Transform. I'm Frank Wright. We'll see you next time. Next week on Truths That Transform. Marxism has been repackaged. Uh, people can't come right out and say, look, I'm a Marxist and I've got something to sell you because people are onto them. Are you an honest man or a thief? It is the most hopeless crime to rob God because you cannot hide, there's no place to go, and you cannot escape. That's next week. Today's program is available on DVD for your gift to this ministry of any amount. Please call, write, or log on to our website today. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.